Oral questions, questions are hell. Let her have. Oh my God, he did it properly. The opposition. Hey. Let's go, Pierre. Prime Minister promised that Wednesdays would be Prime Minister's question period. His public itinerary indicates he's in Ottawa, and he was even spotted in the building. So the question is yeah. for the Prime Minister: Where is he? The carbon tax chaos he has unleashed. He has paused the tax on some heat for some people, leading the government of Alberta to threaten a lawsuit, the government of Saskatchewan to threaten not to collect the tax, NDP provincial parties in the West even turning against it, and some First Nations saying the entire thing is illegal. Will he reverse all of this chaos and just axe the tax? Dude, he's in the building. Are you kidding me? To answer the question, I just want to remind all members it's important not to do uh, indirectly what you can't do directly. As the, the, the honorable, the honorable, uh, the honorable minister. Mr. Speaker, let's actually bring the temperature down and talk about exactly what we've done here. We've accelerated the replacement of home heating oil for. Heat pumps. Mr. Speaker, it's a national program, and if the Premier of Alberta and the Premier of Saskatchewan want to make sure that people who heat their homes with oil in those provinces have access to the same heat pumps, you know what they can do, Mr. Speaker? They can join three Atlantic provinces and BC and sign up for a plan and help low income people in their province. Will they do it? Time will tell. Just ask the tax, my man. Leader of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, the question was for the Prime Minister. Yeah, Who's right. in the building? It's unleashed carbon tax chaos across the country. After saying he would never bend, he backed down because I kept beating him in these debates in the House of Commons. Right. <laughs> Two year pause on some heating oil for some people, causing good. Saskatchewan to threaten not to collect the tax, Alberta to threaten a lawsuit, six provinces coming out against the plan, First Nations saying it's illegal. If he's so proud of himself and what he's done, then why won't he stand up now and defend it? He is in the building, but he's hiding. Trying to dodge all accountability. Again, I ask uh, all members, uh, please, if you do not have uh, the floor, to refrain uh, from speaking uh, so that we can hear the question and we can hear the answer. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition seems to be too busy patting himself on the back to actually do his homework. <laughs> At the end of the day, heating oil costs anywhere between two and four times the price of natural gas. It is a particular driver of energy poverty in this country. We have taken steps forward to improve affordability by enabling the, the, the implementation of heat pumps, which will save people up to $2,500 a year, but doing so in the context of a plan to flake climate change, something again that the Leader of the Opposition has said nothing about in the years since he became the Leader of the Opposition. Here. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Oh, badly for that Liberal Minister who's been abandoned by his leader, who the leader of their government won't even stand and defend his own mm -hmm. decisions. We know that on Thursday, he suddenly, after having his door beat down by terrified Liberals about to lose their seats, decided to flip-flop and bring in a temporary pause on attacks until after the election, dividing Canadians once again into two different classes. If he's so proud of how he's divided people, if he's so Stand proud up and of how he's forcing Canadians to choose between eat, heating and eating, why won't he have the guts to stand up and say so now? Pierre is there for business, man. He's not messing around. Oh, here comes the speaker. That I have been is. The Honourable Minister. I'll tell you who's feeling abandoned by their leader. Conservative Albertans, New Democrat Albertans, Liberal Albertans. You know why, Mr. Speaker? Because Danielle Smith is trying to take Albertans out of the Canada Pension Plan. And what do we have from the leader of the Conservative opposition, Mr. Speaker? Weak sauce and platitudes. The pretender to the throne can stand up here right today and say a full-throated defense of Canada Pension Plan while his 30 Alberta MPs stand in silence. Will he or won't he? I know we will, Mr. 
Mr. Speaker, and Albertans can count on us defending them every single day along with their pensions. Jeez, man. They're so delusional. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, that carbon tax question was for the Prime Minister on Prime Minister's question period today. And I know that I, I don't have my glasses on, but that guy doesn't look like the Prime Minister, <laughs> Mr. Speaker. So I have a very simple motion. That's, that's pretty funny, Pierre. Given that the government has announced a temporary three-year pause to the federal carbon tax on home heating oil, the House call on the government to extend that pause to all forms of heating oil, period. Will the Prime Minister have the courage to stand up and indicate whether the vote on this motion will be a free vote for his members? Yeah. I'd drop a chat or a W in the chat for Pierre, man. That's pretty good. He knows how to stand up. The Honourable Minister. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Those of us on this side of the House prefer to do good public policy rather than simply just play politics. I know that is, a, that is an idea that seems to be foreign to the Leader of the Opposition. Heating oil is two to four times expensive as natural gas. It is a particularly acute issue for people in a number of provinces, not just in Atlantic Canada. The program that we are putting into place applies across the country. It is to ensure that we are addressing concerns around affordability in a thoughtful way, while also addressing concerns around climate change, which I'm sure their children will tell them is a very important issue. Again, colleagues, it is so important. Colleagues, sit down. Hello. Order. Whoa, man, it's getting chaotic today. It is important, uh, once again, to not call in. Sit down, speak it up. Can I ask the member, please? From Surrey. He's telling the speaker to sit down? Please allow me to continue. <laughs> I, ask, I ask all members to please exercise discretion. These are the things which you all raised uh, with me and others in terms of improving the... I don't think any of the MPs in the House respect this guy. I'm going to ask the Honourable uh, Leader of the... Colleagues. Oh, he's going like full parent mode. I, I feel like he might cut the feed. May I ask? Do you hear someone say, sit down, sit down. Excuse me. Colleagues. Colleagues. He's going to freak out. Temperatures are running hot. Temperatures are running hot today. If I could ask all members, please, to sit down. Sit May down. I ask all members to respectfully sit down, please? All members. May I ask all members to respectfully sit down <laughs> until I recognize them to, to speak? Please. Guys, you, use this time now to smash that like button. This is freaking hilarious. Goodness. Colleagues. Dude, he's going like full. Uh, the honorable member. Dictator. The, the honorable leader of the opposition. There you go. He caved in. <laughs> Woo! Drop some apples in the chat. Speaker, How do you like them apples, Speaker? As, the, as these liberal members watch their prime minister in a panicked huddle in the fetal position, shaking and trembling. But they are losing control of themselves. The last <laughs> few days of carbon tax chaos has been very hard on them, and now their leader is defending them. The minister says we should let Canadians decide. So why don't we pause the carbon tax on all home heat until the vote, when Canadians will decide whether they want 
the Prime Minister's plan to hike the tax 61 cents a litre, or my common sense plan to axe the tax for everyone forever? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, that we as Liberals are united on. We are united on the fact that the Leader uh, of the Opposition is trying to destroy the action that our government is taking on climate change, not only our government, but governments across the world that are finally turning the tide, because he wants to go back to the time when they were attacking climate action. Mr. Speaker, we're united in the fact that we led the G7 in 2020 and 2022 in growth, that we're going to be number one again in 2024, that 64,000 jobs were created in Canada. Which country would he change places with? When he denigrates Canada, what country does he think better? Because this is the greatest country in the world, and we will stand up for it, Mr. Speaker. He almost knocked over his water. Holy smokes! The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, we have someone now auditioning for the job of Prime Minister. There we go! away. The mice will play, but we don't need any more of this chaos. The NDP would actually do its job and hold this government to account. They would announce today they would vote in accordance with the views of the NDP in BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and now Manitoba, all of whom agree that people in cold climates, whether it be in Timmins or Capus Casing or Churchill, should enjoy tax-free heat. So will they vote to keep the heat on by taking the tax off, or will they once again serve this out-of-touch Prime Minister? Yeah. <laughs> Holy smokes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I've said a number of times, and perhaps the Honourable Leader of the Opposition has not heard me, um, the home heating oil is up to four times as expensive as natural gas. It creates challenges with respect to affordability for Canadians. We have come forward with a plan, a plan that applies in every province and territory in this country that will address that particular issue in a manner that will be affordable, that will ensure long-term savings for families, but will do so in a manner that continues the fight against climate change, a fight against climate change that would not happen if he was in the other side of the, of the House. For the Prime Minister, his lone Liberal MP in Edmonton was asked, quote, Western Canada, that they're being left out of this whole home heating oil and the exemption for home heat from the carbon price. Should natural gas be added to that? He said, no, I'm not concerned at all. He then went on to say, that if Albertans want to have the exemption, they can switch their furnaces over to oil. <laughs> <laughs> the hypocrisy, eh? With this member from Edmonton that Albertans should spend thousands of dollars putting in a more emitting source of energy just to avoid paying the carbon tax. Bad <laughs> boy, Pierre. Call him out. The Honourable Minister. The uh, hockey team that plays in my home city is called the Oilers, and we just handed a defeat to his former team, the Flames. But that being said, Mr. Speaker, if I miss... Who cares? Albertans right now can actually use a federal program to go from natural gas to a heat pump with a $5,000 credit from our government or a $40,000 interest-free loan. It's the Green Homes Program, it's the Green Loans Program, and if Premier Smith wants to extend free home pumps to Albertans to get off of heating oil, she can join Atlantic Premiers and work with the feds to make exactly that happen. This guy's really trying to talk about hockey. 
The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. I can understand why the Prime Minister didn't want to stand up and defend that comment from his <laughs> Liberal member. But his comment is similar to what we heard from Paul McLaughlin. He's the President of the Rural Municipalities of Alberta. And he said, and I quote, If I have an understanding that I can buy heating oil, which is effectively kerosene, and I can buy it with no carbon levy, levy I will change all my grain drying and my barn heating to heating oil. I'll tell you right now, there are folks doing the math. So the government is now incentivizing farmers to spend money shifting from natural gas drying and heating over to oil heating, which has higher emissions. This yeah. makes no sense. Why won't he just shake off this lunacy and axe the tax? Gotta love it when Pierre exposes their stupidness. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Heating oil, perhaps the, the Honourable Member does not understand this, heating oil is two to four times as expensive as natural gas. It is a particularly acute issue with respect to heating and affordability. I would tell you, though, that he should also be aware that the exemption is for three years, during which time people are expected to implement heat pumps to ensure that they actually have an affordable way to address this issue, but in a manner that is, is consistent with fighting climate change, something, again, that the Honourable Leader either doesn't believe in or certainly doesn't think is important. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. While the question was for the Prime Minister, I'm glad he, this member answered because he reminded Atlantic Canadians that it is just a pause and that if they re-elect this Prime Minister, they will get a massive tax increase on their home eating oil. Mm -hmm. And where is all the money going? We now know that 60% of Canadians pay more in carbon taxes than they get back in rebates. The difference is funding this wasteful government. We now know that a senior li um, member of the Liberal government's bureaucracy compared their billion-dollar green fund to the sponsorship scandal, saying that it was massive incompetence. Who got wow. rich and who will have to pay? Yeah. That's one thing that we do want to know, is where does the money go as well? <clears throat> the Honourable Parliament. We have the right to know that. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, the Minister of Innovation welcomes the decision of the Auditor General to conduct an audit, and he also welcomes the invitation that he received uh, to committee next week, where he will be answering Conservative questions with respect to this entire issue, Mr. Speaker. I would also note that the organization has agreed to cooperate fully and is enabling um, all documents and information to be provided to the Auditor General. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Now the carbon tax chaos continues. The incoming leader of the Liberal Party, Mark Carney, has weighed in and said that he, quote, I would have looked for other ways to provide support than the route chosen, not least of because it, what is important is that clarity in terms of the overall plan, the overall direction. So now we have an incoming Liberal leader taking pot shots at an outgoing Liberal Prime Minister who is in hiding. How much longer can Canadians deal with this carbon tax chaos before we get an election and choose a common sense Conservative? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before I uh, pass on to the parliamentary secretary to answer the question, I'd like to remind all members in that we can't of do directly, uh, we the, can uh, do indirectly, and the, or some shit. The leader of the opposition, I again want to remind all members to please take a look at uh, the statement which I made regarding decorum in the House, uh, in uh, in terms of understanding what all members have to do in terms of their work. I'll pass on the question to the uh, Parliamentary Secretary to respond. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's 2023, and if you don't have a plan to fight climate change, 
and protect the environment, then you don't have a plan for the economy or for affordability either. And it's very clear that the Conservative plan is just to cut funding for social services like the Canada Child Benefit and our dental plan and seniors funding and the, the dental benefit, which has uh, just recently uh, surpassed 200,000 children, Mr. Speaker. The Conservative plan to fix global inflation by cutting people's services is not going to work. It's risky, irresponsible, and it's absolutely reckless, just like the Conservative leader. <laughs> the Conservatives going, ooh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. This is certainly entertaining today. And again, I'd like to remind all members in uh, the questions and their answers uh, is that you will want to make sure that you are uh, not impugning to individual members. Uh, questions that I raised regarding. Uh, he doesn't even know what he's trying to say. Intelligence or even the presence in the House, I ask all members, please, uh, to exercise uh, some great restraint and decorum. We can have passionate debates in this House, and there are ways which we can do so within the rules uh, that have been established by this place. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Prime, instead of answering my questions and engaging me in debate, the Prime Minister forces yet another random Liberal to read off PMO talking points about the carbon tax chaos that is unfolding in this country. He's got one province threatening lawsuits, another not collecting the tax at all. He's got NDP provincial governments and parties turning against him, even though he's in coalition with that same party. Will he end the carbon tax chaos and agree to my motion to simply treat every single Canadian equally and take the tax off so that Canadians can keep the heat on? It's somehow a controversial statement when it should the not be. Minister. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I'm not sure that the honourable member is actually listening to the responses, but at the end of the day, heating oil is two to four times as expensive as natural gas. It is a particularly acute issue with respect to affordability. We have come up with a program that will enable folks to be able to put in place something that will save them significant money while being consistent with the fight against climate change. It is, I would say, appalling that in this day and age, we still have a party in this chamber, the Conservative Party of Canada, that has no policy and not even any belief in the, in the reality of climate change. It is time that that changed and Canadians will make that happen in the next election. Yeah. No, the Honourable... They will be voting Conservative. Mr. Speaker, Prime Minister said he would have Wednesday Prime Minister's question period. That he would show up for work and answer questions. But here we are less than a week after he had to back down and pause his signature policy, the massive new carbon tax. His plan now is to quadruple that tax to 61 cents a litre, forcing seniors everywhere to choose between eating and heating. If that's really the right thing to do, then why doesn't he have the guts to stand up and defend that policy before Canadians here and now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Prove it that you believe in it, Trudeau. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The price on pollution is one part of a comprehensive approach to addressing the climate issue. It is, is implemented in a manner that is affordable. The majority of Canadians get more money back than they pay on the price on pollution. Having a thoughtful approach to climate change is an important part of being a real and realistic political party in this country. You cannot actually have an environmental policy without a climate policy. You cannot actually have an, an effective economic plan for the future without recognizing the reality of climate change. It is time they entered the modern era. Yeah. 